Welcome to this week's Cattle Call. I'm Susan Littlefield here on the Rural Radio Network. And we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, unfortunately, midweek. It's kind of like a Tuesday, Wednesday type of trade field. So we're really waiting for this cash to fully be established. How much of that is going to wait because of the holiday that we had on Monday? But we're attracting some funds. And that's where we're going to start today with Brad Coima. Brad, of course, is with Coima Coima Varlick out of Sioux Center, Iowa. So let's talk about these funds. What do you see it as you look at this week's trade? Well, we've talked about it. Thanks for having me on, Susan. It's always fun. Um, uh, we've talked about this before, I think, you know, two or three, four weeks before this, where we saw this flat, boring, steady lower market, declining open interest. It didn't seem like it mattered whether we had an up day or a down day. It just seemed like it was like an exit to the door, uh, you know, and we need the market needs a long speculator, in my opinion. I know that there seems to be others that don't really see it my way there, but I mean, compare it to the cash trade, right? You got a packer that wants to buy stuff as cheap as they can, and you want to sell it as high as they can. How's that working out? You know, I mean, so you need to have the long speculator and you need to have the natural long too. And I'm talking about the Costco's, the Walmart's, even a packer, for instance, you know, people ask me, why isn't the packer long futures with the discount structure? It's a great question. The one that should be asked to the CME. Um, but I've been waiting, thinking that, okay, now the funds are all, just about all the way down. The open interest got down to very low levels again. You know, are they going to start to come back? And yes, they will. You know, don't get too worried. Um, and I've been really encouraged now as this market started back up on an uptrend that you've seen this accumulation of open interest. That's a good sign. Um, that means the funds are willing to come back. Uh, of course, some of these funds are trend following funds. Of course, some of these funds are, you know, believe it or not, funds that actually do trade some fundamental news. Um, and and so I, I think that's an encouraging start. Looks like the market's trying to base out and make a low here, which shouldn't be the first time that we've done it this time of year. That's how it kind of feels to me, Susan. <clears throat> but are we are we getting too heavy on these cattle at this point? The weights are. Um, yeah, that's the that's the side of the market that is is a little troubling to me and everyone, right? Um, um, you know, particularly in my backyard, which is Iowa, Northeast Nebraska, South Southeast South Dakota. Um, we feel here, you know, this is somewhat of a, a subjective comment, but we do not have heavy cattle here. Um, and you know, this would be the time of year. These we are farmer feeders. It's September feed these calves for 10 months and the weather's good and they're as big as a house. The cattle are great, you know, quality cattle, yada, yada. That is not really the case this year. What I saw around here was a willingness to sell because of the profitability that these cattle were um, and and wanting to grab a hold of some of that nice profits and, 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 and get those cattle sold on a timely basis. But so the weights, you know, I mean, the weights are the weights. Uh, it, it, it's a federal inspected slaughter. You, you got to trust that those weights are accurate. So I, I saw some interesting data this morning that, that maybe will help to explain it a little bit. This broke down the wheat, the weights by region, Susan, um, and uh, the, the, the major regions like you would expect, okay? Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, mm -hmm. and it broke out Iowa. What I see uh, there, which is telling me, it looks to me like the, the the traditional big corporate states, Texas and Kansas, the weights have just gone up, 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 even more than seasonally normally does. Those weights always go up this time of year, but they've gone up even more seasonally than it than they typically have done. And and when I visit down there, it seems to be I hear a couple of things. One is that well, feeder replacement feeder cattle are way too high, so we decided just to feed these a little longer. Makes sense. Um, feed cheap certainly cheaper than it was. Um, and then the other thing uh, is, you know, we had a pretty wide choice select spread for quite a while, Susan. So these guys on these formulas were probably incentivized by their partner, the Packer pal, um, that, hey, we're going to get more grade on these cattle and the way to get more grade is to feed them longer. So, you know, I, when I compare their weight charts to the Iowa one, I mean, Iowa looks like it, like it had a heart attack. I mean, our average weights in Iowa are sharply lower the last two weeks. They really were, uh, which is somewhat vindication to me of my subjective opinion of that, boy, I just don't see any big cattle and neither does the weight scale. So um, I continue to think that um, Iowa is still important. Uh, 
that this north area is, is, is still very influential in price because as you know we make up 25 percent of the supply but our supply is much more variable than it is in the north so i still seem i take that data as being a little bit encouraging susan well we saw the cash uh, steady last week shortened trade week this week do we see cattle guys saying you know maybe we'll just hold out we want the higher money we'll wait till next week if we don't get it the old rule of thumb used to be uh, when you had a short for a long, in other words, a short business week. So there's four days this week for a regular long five day week next week uh, that typically you'd have a better chance of cash being higher that week. Um, uh, and the opposite is true, too, when you have a long for a short, uh, just you know, less demand. Right um, now, I. I I was hoping last week we were going to catch and do a little bit better than just the steady cash bids that we saw. Uh, and I'm going to stick to my guns and, and say the same thing this week. I think there's a chance we could be a little bit better. I am encouraged also uh, by the fact that I've heard a multiple uh, packers that have decided to make up for the Monday holiday by killing this Saturday. Uh, I don't think they'd do that unless they either had meat sold or, uh, you know, had some, some decent profitable margins. So hopefully we can, um, see if we can't get just a little better cash going here this week. That's still my expectation. What do you see as demand at this point? I mean, we had some higher box beef prices. Is that going to continue now that we're kind of out of the official run of summer? I've been encouraged the fact that they couldn't, you know, I, everybody was telling me, well, we're going to take the beef down to 300 or less. It always slows down on the week of Labor Day, blah, blah, blah. And now it seems to have stabilized again, back up to this 310 level. Um, I, I struggle with demand, uh, you know, these questions, because if I could figure this out, tell you what, Susan, we could really have a radio program, right? You know, um, yeah. I, de demand is, you can only measure by where we've been. Now, you know, people say to me, beef's too high. And then I quote to them, I said, well, look at the retail price of beef. It's actually not much different than last year. In a lot of cases, the major cuts are at or below last year. Now, that's a two-edged sword. Um, we, the, this isn't corn. It, it, it's a it's a product that has to as a as a limited shelf life. Okay, um, a perishable type deal almost. So, the higher you can sell it, the better your demand is. So I would say is demand as great as it was at one time? Maybe not quite. Uh, but look at the last cold storage report. That was very positive. Um, the number of exports that we've had very positive. The spot that the American dollar in is also helpful. So, um, you know, when you have these big hiccups like yesterday in the stock market. Um, clearly, you know, I mean, I mean, I've got it on my main screen right over here because that's important. You know, what's going on over there. We got a mm -hmm. couple of big reports, this employment report, the jobs report on Friday. Uh, I'm sure the market will be keyed in on that. So uh, I, I, you know, barring some kind of very deep major recession, I think demand is just fine. Um, but yeah, stay tuned. It, it seems like cattle are always right in the front row of all that kind of news, right? Yeah. Will the chart cleanups continue? I believe it will. Uh, charts have gotten uh, quite a bit better than uh, the last time you and I visited. Um, I'm encouraged by by that. I, I still, you know, hang my hat a little bit on when you've got a discount structure like this is, you know, if last cash is 184, you got the front month trading at 179. You still got a lot of negativity built in here that, you know, if we can surprise them by firming this cash market up here this week or next, uh, I would think there's room to go here. So um, I'm I, I, I choose to think the market's in decent shape right here. And finally, as we wrap up, I've been traveling a little bit this last couple of weeks, and I've noticed a lot more empty feedlot pens. And you and I have had this conversation before that the cattle aren't here uh, to fill up those lots. Is this going to, you're going to see more and more in the next couple of months? I get teased here in the office because I like to say um, I was there when we ran out. And obviously, you're never going to completely run out. I got a funny story nice. about that, but it's a, family program um the, the uh, <laughs> um it's some of that seasonal you know farmer feeder feeds a set of calves right and then they get fat in the summer and, and late summer like now and then they wait and in october november they get another set of calves so some of that's a bit seasonal but you know it, it look at the way they overbuilt the feed yards you know i, I couldn't help but wonder like kansas is going to have this huge expansion uh, you know it's in the news that a big feedlot in nebraska right the biggest one ever in nebraska is coming up i'm thinking like really awesome timing you know just when the supply of feeder cattle is going to be the tightest since 1950 we're going to build all this extra pin space it's clearly somebody's going to have to go without um and we'll see you know i uh, i hope as we continue to move that trend i hope it's the guys in the south that go without and the, as they continue to move these cattle back toward the north like they have been 
All right. Best way for folks to reach you, Brad? KKBtrading.com is the website. The phone number is 712-722-0023. And no hiccups again. How about that? Huh? Two weeks in a row. Thanks so much, Brad Coima, joining us this week. A quick reminder, commodity futures and options do involve a substantial risk of loss, not suitable to all investors. We'll take this show on the road next week for Husker Harvest Days. I'm Susan Littlefield on the Rural Radio Network. Mm-hmm.